I know. Today's video is about complete areas. I have already built a small T intersection. What you need to do um, is visit always when two link or a connector overlaps, it automatically creates an undefined um, conflict area. So, for example, that. So, if I place a link, if I place another one, it will create a conflict area there. In order to see it, you need to just click on it and it brings up with yellow. Uh, it's called passive. And by default, what it means is that there is nothing there, no rules, so everyone just goes as they please. No one gives way to anyone, so they just basically go through each other. What you need to do to change it, you need to left click on it to select it. In the new Wizim versions, you will see two little uh, text box coming up, just basically helping with the visualization which link is which. Uh, and you hold on control. And having your mouse your uh, cursor over the area, you just keep clicking the right button and this circles through all the settings. So this means that the West East gives uh, has right of way and the minor is link B. If you do that, that means B has right of way over A. This way each has right of way over the other. In this case, it has no meaning or it makes no sense. When it makes sense, if it is an exit, um, let me show you on this example better. And if you keep clicking through it, we'll just basically go in circles. And you need to make sure that you select conflict area. If, you're, if you set up a rule, if you click away, it is there. It still shows it. It can be quite confusing sometimes or annoying when you have a lot of complaints, so you sometimes just better just turning it off. Okay, so let's have a look here. This is a T-intersection. The links directions are this. What you need to do is you just basically need to go through and set up one by one. So this way A has right of way. And in this case, when you have basically a vehicle going straight and the vehicle turning left, this is the case when you are supposed to set it up red red. It's called end undetermined. So what happens is if a vehicle comes here, there is another conflict here for the left turn. I also set it up this way. So what can happen if a vehicle drives here, moves into here, but it stops here because it needs to give way for vehicles driving on link A. So it stops here. But the vehicle end extends all the way back to that link. And in, with this setting, vehicles coming upstream wanting to go straight, they are not going to just go there. They only uh, they will only do that in case the vehicle stopping here can fit into this short little section, which it can't. But if I move this up and I recalculate this plan. In this case, you might be able to fit a vehicle in. But if you have a longer one, like a truck, and the end of the truck or the trailer comes a little bit back here, it will take into account and it won't drive through. Yeah, so, but normally, you don't set it up too often because sometimes the link here is wide and that vehicle just maybe use the curb or something but just to keep in mind that um, if they need to slow down significantly or it's very hard to just uh, go around that vehicle uh, the one waiting to turn left it's better to just set it to that red and again here this one has the right of way here that one has the right of way and here again it is red red and here it is that way and here, okay, so here this is a little overlapping. What you can do to resolve it is you basically move the link a little bit down. So they they don't have overlap, so now it's gone. It's better to have it like that. Conflict areas are quite buggy. 
if you have a lot of conflict area in a small place, it can lead to unrealistic stopping and waiting. So you need to keep in mind that you need to try to make it simpler or, or simplified by removing all non-essential conflict areas, reducing the number, maybe remove these red if you have a bug and, and things like that. Or you stop using conflict areas and for those buggy turns or movements you use priority routes. But we will look at it in the next video. And here it is again red red if it is only a single lane. If it is only a single lane um, so if there is no space for two vehicles to stand next to each other. If there is space for two vehicles to squeeze in then you can put it to yellow. So if one is waiting to turn right the other one can just go left if there is a, if it's free. What settings you can do? So if you click on one the quick queue comes up. It has most of the settings, the ones you need to deal with, but if um, you need to deal if you need to make it more accurate later you can always open the attribute list with the wrench icon and you can check because there are others some other settings as well okay so let's deal with for example what happens if um, there is a boss turning if let's say that um, this is very close to each other If these things are very close to each other, then this is also quite close. And also one more thing, if there are multiple um, conflicts over each other, so you can do a right click object tag position and then you can select whichever uh, located under or, or basically under location where you click, or you click on, on one and you keep pushing the tabulator, the tab key. Okay, and what you need to do, so for example, let's say a bus is coming from here or heavy vehicle, so a lot of heavy vehicles turn left, they usually move the giveaway uh, uh, line bit back, so you can't drive all the way up here to the intersection and wait there. You need to basically stop a little bit back here. Then what you do is for all these conflicts you need to add an additional stopping distance and if you hover your mouse over these you will have a little dis uh, description there what it means. Then you can just add here 10 meter or 20 meter from that point how far it should stop back. So if you measure the 20 meter from there. If you want the stopping distance for this one as well, you need to add this extra distance from here to there and then calculate your uh, the distance for the line. Uh, some other key settings, so there is a visible link A, visible link B, so when you set these, These are the distances, so assuming there is a building or some obstacle that, for example, for link B, they can't see. So this is the distance where it can see on the side, when it can see the vehicle on the other link more correctly. So here it is measured like DL2, DL1. So for B, it is DL2. For A, this is the L1. For visibility, for link. Um, you can also change the status here. Front rear gap and rear view. Rear gap. Um, if you hover your mouse again, it will give you a description. But also, there is a little graphic here which helps. So it's basically a gap this vehicle needs to maintain that in front of and the rear gap. So it will wait as long as it can drive through safely by maintaining those gaps. 
with these settings you can uh, calibrate this uh, keyway to let more vehicle, less vehicle through um, or to set up how they actually keep a if you check it on the side. Mesocritical gap, this is not applicable for micro simulation, only if you run meso model. Satisfactory distance factor, I would keep all of these on default, only change it if you actually need to, if your intersection, if your keep a doesn't operate the way you saw it on the side. Um, but again, it just basically adds for the safety and it is for uh, the merging conflicts, so not for this, more for like, uh, there is another link there, connector, and so this is like a merging conflict, so it is only applicable for these, it makes sense there. Observe adjacent lane, so this is quite an important one, let me just move this away, assuming that this lane has two lanes, so this link has two lanes and you have vehicles coming into this one if, and by default it is turned off, so this observed adjacent lane is turned off by default um, in most of the cases, or in many cases, vehicles actually take into account um, traffic in this lane as well. If, it's, if that is the case in your country or in your site, you need to tick that box and then they will take into account these vehicles as well. But if it is a three lane one that is not an adjacent lane anymore, so then it only will be this one, the middle one, uh, taken into account. Anticipate routing decisions, so this is also an important one. So. Okay, I made a mess here. Let me just undo this. So what happens is you have the you have the approach here, and assume that there is a parking lot here or a pub or a shopping access or something. So very close, and um, vehicles and vehicles um, come this way and for this one, so if someone comes here want to turn right, need to give way for everyone coming from here yeah? but if someone turns here off or someone turns here off so basically with these settings you can say that what is the proportion of those vehicles which can take into account like the indicators of these right turner ones. So if let's say you come here, you stop, you give way, but you see that the vehicle coming here, having the indicator to turn right, then you will not going to wait until it turns right. You will basically start turning even before the vehicle makes that turn. So in this case you can put it, if you put it to 100%, that means it will anticipate that turn for everyone. So if there are 100 vehicles coming from here turning right, there is no one going straight, this will basically just be a free flow turning right. So it will uh, take into account that uh, they indicate to the right and they turn, so they don't need to give way to them. But if it is set to 50%, <coughs> that means um, it will wait for half, for 50 vehicles turning right from, um, so if you have 100 vehicles coming here all turning right, for 50 vehicles here, that we are not being able to see. For half of the vehicles, um, they won't be able to uh, tell. You can use this, for example, if uh, not many people use their indicators, so they just come and turn right without actually indicating. <clears throat> it can have a huge impact, impact in an intersection, uh, the performance or in the calibration validation. Avoid block minor, so assuming there is a queue coming back here, if you click avoid blocking, avoid block minor, that means vehicle will try to keep this empty. 
so it will make sure that it won't block. <clears throat> or a better example would be if it is a um, if it is a true link, one which uh, that needs to be way like that, and if the congestion comes back, if you set this to avoid blocking minor, it will try to keep this clear, like a yellow box. If you put it to 50%, that means only 50% of the vehicle will keep it clear. It will try to keep it clean. It is, all, again, quite buggy. Um, it is most, in most of the cases, it, it just doesn't work well. So don't have high expectations here. Probably priority rule is a better way to uh, deal with a very congested situation like this if there is a yellow box. And you can also have an avoid booking major one, but you need to access it from here. Avoid booking major flow. This is the same, just uh, the other way around. Because it by default is said that vehicles from here are going to uh, block the major flow. So they are going to drive on if they can't visit. But you can tick it off if that happens actually. Yeah. And I left the best tip uh, to the end. So let me just uh, list all the conflicts. I select all. I set them to undetermined. Sorry passive and instead of doing it manually what you can do you can use this define major flow you just click your major flow here then you click again and it creates most of the and you click ok and it creates most of the rules just keep in mind that it won't create for the those connector connections which is off those links but it can save you a lot of time, a lot of time, especially if you have like full intersections, like four-way with all the movements allowed and you have like a whole corridor, you just click once and it's done. I hope it helped. I hope you learned something today. Please like and subscribe and let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos or for any ideas. Thank you for watching. See you next time.